yeah, if I, if I believe he cheated, then I say on there, no credit. And I've had people come up and explain their situation or whatever. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, but normally it's really obvious. You guys are not that good at paraphrasing or changing the order. I especially love it used to be a joke. I used to joke that, yeah, somebody's going to put answers will vary. And then people started putting answers will vary. I'm like, no. Or C students graph. C students graph. Uh, what? What? And some of you guys really do not understand what I'm talking about. I can just see it in your eyes. You're like, this is how I do college, man. I go to Slater.com or something. And I just copy shit. And, and other teachers make homework 40%, and somehow I slide by, and I'm like, my homework ain't worth nowhere near 40%, because that's bullshit. If you have a teacher that makes homework, all right, I have to apologize. I'm catching this in video, too. I'm going on a bit of a rant, right? But I have teachers that give homework 40%. They never look at the homework. They just, if you give something to them, they count it as great. So that's 40% of an A. You can make, you can fail every test in the final and still pass the damn class. And then you take me, and I'm an asshole. So, all right. So, if you've had teachers that have allowed you to do stupid things before, you're going to suffer in my class. I'm sorry, I'm not going to let that happen, right? Because that's bad for you. Okay, so a lot of you guys are good students. I love it. If you're a crap student, I'm going to point it out to you. Try to change it so you can actually get something out of your college experience. Some of you guys are looking at me like, challenge accepted. <laughs> you have to put a lot of work in. Why not just learn the stuff? I don't know. Okay, enough of that business. Anything else from homework stuff or general technical logistical questions or you want to try to make me go on another rant? Oh, yeah, yesterday we did this, the shampoo problem. The shampoo problem. Uh, and there was at least 40 weeks of percentage, so we just counted how many had at least 40 weeks. Two and one is three. Out of 20 total. Yep. I love it. Anything else? Okay. We're going to actually develop some formulas today. Our first little formulas. We're going to see our first little Greek letters coming up. So I can't remember if I told you guys, the thing that gets people down about 160 is they believe word problems are in here and there are no word problems in here. Um, but what actually trips students up is the Greek letters, what they mean, the formulas, when to use which one. That's, right? If you know the formula, if, I'm going to let you have a formula sheet. Don't completely freak out. But you're not going to be able to label them. You have to know what they mean. It's really just plug and chug stuff into the right place in the right formula. And that's what it kind of boils down to. To understand which formula to use, you have to understand the concepts. So that's why I call this a concept-heavy class. There's very little algebra, right? The computations are done in your calculator. So it's all about the concept in this class, really. It's not about the actual math work. It's not a bunch of algebraic manipulation. It's not a bunch of by hand long division or something. It's ideas. Okay, so uh, the book does things in a very interesting order. I'm going to do it a little bit out of order. I'm going to do measures of center first, which I think is section 2.5, and then we're going to go back and do uh, percentiles and stuff like that. That's 2, 3, 2, 4. If you're curious about where the hell we are. So if I, say, if I just say center, this, the center of data, what do you guys think might that be? The mean. Mean is one type of measure center. Go away. Mean, remember, is another name for what we in English call the average. In mathematics, there are many things that could be considered an average. So we call this one specifically the mean. But when we say average, everyday life, we mean mean. So somebody tell me in English, how would you get the mean of a set of data? So if I had a set of data, uh, 1, 4, 9, 11, 20, how would you get the mean for that? Yeah. Add them all up. So in English, 
Add them all up. Divided by the number, I was going to put the symbol number, but it was number of data points. How's that? You maybe wouldn't have said those specific words, but add them all up, divide by how many there, right? Of course, we all know that. We all know how to find the average. If you didn't, you know. So here's what it looks like. That's way too many flipping words for math people. Right? We, we're very efficient with our time or lazy. One of those two things. Um, anybody know what the symbol is for add them all up? What the, not, don't say plus, but there's a symbol that means add up all these things. So, whoop to do weird thing. I love it. It's like a pointy e. Sigma. So that's the Greek letter S. So math people are like, oh, what do we use for sum? Starts with an S. Yeah. Let's go Greek. Yeah, Greek's cool. Uh, so you might have seen that symbol before sigma, 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 or something, you know, for fraternities or words. It's a Greek letter. It means add up all the. So it's an unfinished sentence. By itself, it doesn't mean shit. Add up all the. Mm -hmm. So so what represents all the possible values of data? How many aren't there many values? Doesn't the possible value vary as you move through the list? So it is a variable. So if I add up all the values, so that is that phrase in Mathish. I translate from English to Mathish. And thankfully for the bottom, we use the letter N for the number that I'm looking at, the total number of things. So this is the formula for the mean. Here's the, is everybody decent with that? I, I just want you to see. Everybody's cool with this. This is how you get the average, right? Say again. The E. Okay, we'll focus on the E in a minute. But all you got to understand right now is the E means add up all the. So this means add. You can do it, Jeff. Up all the gather yeah, parentheses. So it's kind of like it's kind of like if I wrote this. If I said do this, what what symbol is that? So if I said do this, you say do that to what? I know, but if I said do this, you'd go. You haven't given me what to do that to. So if you write this, you, you haven't told me what the shit to add up, Jeff. Right? So add up all the x's, mm -hmm. add up all the values, divided by how many there are. N will always mean the total number of things. So now you start to understand why this is what troubles students, because you're not used to all the Greek letters. You're used to some of them, like pi, but not all of them, like uppercase sigma. Lowercase sigma is coming into play later. Yes? So... Your sigma is the sum, the x is the variable, and your n is the total of all those things. Total number of. Total number. Yeah. So add up all the variables and divide by how many there are. All the variable values. Okay, I like it. So let's focus on, oh, oh, let me finish this up. So this is the average, right? This is the mean. Here's the symbol. If it's a population mean, it's the symbol, oh boy. There you go. French cow, right? You. So that's how you say this. It's like a U with an extra leg. And a lot of people end up making a little M because it kind of does look like an M. But it's a U with a little extra leg, right? So if you make a U and put a little extra leg on it, that's mu. So that's mu. That's if it's so population in the early going is going to have Greek letters because it's the population. It wants to look more formal. It's like using Roman numbers for the Super Bowl, right? Although the fiftieth one would have just been this giant L because that's the Roman fifty L. It's much more impressive when it's X X X V I I U. Bam. Right? You guys know? Yes. Okay. So we use mu for the population, and then if it was a sample mean. The symbol is x bar. Same formula, because it's the same idea. Right? 
So if it's a bunch of numbers, then it's a population. You still add them up and divide by how many they are. Even if it's a sample, you do the same thing. I just use a different symbol if it's a population or a sample. Yes? This, this? X bar. Yeah. If you had to figure out how to say this, you, you, some of you guys might say X line or X flat hat. I don't know. But this is X bar. I like X flat hat. That's cool. My hat. All the jokes were for me. So, I mean, if I ask you to do that real quick, somebody might have already done this. Do you know what symbol to use if I just give you this for the answer? Is it mu or x bar? No, you don't know. This could be a population. So let's say this is a population. What's the mean? So how would you do it? So it would be add them all up. Right, you get 20, 40, 5, 20, 40, 5. Is that cool? Divided by? 5. So the mean is 9. If it was a sample, the only difference would be I would have put an X bar here. It's the same calculation. The idea of mean doesn't change. We use different symbols just so that somebody else knows, oh, the original was a population, or the original was a sample. Oh. So nothing really changed with how we do things, which changes how we represent things. So let me, let me look at this summation symbol more specifically. So where you got all that stuff down there? Oh yeah, okay. Let me do it over here. So say I had a bunch of data. It looks like this. Uh, 2, 7, 14, 15... 29. And my question is, what's the sum of x? So what would you get? 67. So you just add them all up. Is that cool? Because it says add up all the x's. Well, there's the x's. Sweet. So I just add them up. 67. What do you think this means? Now, let me put down here another thing. Now, now watch. This is what you can always do. We're going to have a lot of formulas with the symbol in them. Yay. What I tell people is cover the symbol up. So I need a list of those before I can add them up. Now, what does this say? This one I could do right now. Because this says square... The sum of x. So this would be 67 squared, which is, I don't know, 420, 40, 480, plus 9, 40, 489? Somebody helping me at all? I'm just going to... 489. Cool. Yay, my one skill. <laughs> you got to show on it. I'm a math dealer. All right. By the way, real quick, real quick. Uh, how do you do 67 times 67 relatively quickly? Stay with me now. You can do 70 minus 3 times 70 minus 3. 4,900 minus 210 minus 210 plus 9. Well, that's what I did in my head, right? So a lot of human calculators just spend all their life learning little tricks like that. I'm like, I'm, not, I'm only going to know a few of those. Screw it. <laughs> I don't want to be a human calculator necessarily. All right, so that's this one, and then that goes right in here. That's that one. How the shit do I do that one? That middle dude. What did I say earlier? If you, what do I need a list of? What do I need a list of? I want to add up these. Do I know what these are? No, 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 come on. Do I know what the x squares are yet? No, let me write them down for myself. What are the x squares? Nine slips, two, ten, five, uh, <coughs> uh, six, fifty-eight, forty-two, plus two, nine, four. I've lost it in my head. Nine forty-seven. Eight forty-one. That was close. And then you add those up. Whatever the hell that is. Two forty-nine. Fifty-four. Seventy-four. 
13, 15, 13, 15? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that would be this. That's 13, 15. Let me do one more example with the summation, then we'll move on. I really want to make sure you guys get this idea, because it's going to rule our life in, a few, in quite a few places uh, in this class. Um, so what have I said? So let's say I have the same data. Become a 29. And I want to know, what's the sum of x minus uh, 6? Try to do that one by yourself. That is not 67 minus 6, right? I didn't say the sum of x minus 6. I said the sum of x minus 6. So it's very much like that second one, that part b. This is my hopeful tai chi. the right stuff going on. So what do I have to make here to figure out what? I've got to figure out what the hell x minus 6 is in every case so that I can add them all up. Add up all the uh, x minus 6s. All right, well, let me make a list of x minus 6s. So I put here Notice, real quick, if I took six away from all of these, and how many are there? How many numbers are there? Five. five. Six times five is 30. So if I take six from each, that's 30 from the whole thing. If I take 30 away from 67, you're 37. Hey, Nita. Need a mosquito. Okay, okay. All right, so that's the summation symbol. That's a few examples of how to work an equation that the sum is in. Okay. Um, so, coming back to measures of center. We have mean so far. Now, there's another way to measure the center of a list of data. Like, here's five numbers. What's the number that's in the middle? 14. 14. Now, these numbers are in order, so that makes sense. Isn't 14 in the middle? So wouldn't that be a measure of center? Is 14 the average of these numbers? No. Hell no. Could be, but no. Not in this case. It's not symmetric. It's not going to be the, the average. So this is not the same thing as the average, but it is a different way to get a feel for the middle. So this one is called the... Oh, thank you. Anybody in the front, if you see it turn off or if I forget to turn it, just remind me. Thank you. So this guy is the number in the middle. It's got the symbol X with a broken bar. Poor little dude. Didn't quite make it to the mean because he broke his little bar. So that is X tilde. That's the median. Yes. I love it. You can make my job easy. Now, the fact that it's the number in the middle leads to a possible problem. So if I have 3, 4, 7, 9, 11, that's easy. What's the median? Seven, seven. Seven. But if I have three, four, seven, nine, what's the median? Four, six, four, 
No, what is the median? Yeah, so if I have four numbers, the number in the middle is the number that's in the middle of the two that's in the middle, holy shit. So if I get the average of the two in the middle, that is the freaking middle. There's no question about it. Take the two in the middle, get the middle of those, that's like middle, middle, right? So if you have an odd number, it's easy. It's this, oh, I'm sorry, it's this one. If you have an even number, you average the two in the middle. I love it. Okay. So this would be what? The average of 4 and 7. 5.5. So this average would be, and this median would be 5.5. Now, real quick word about mean and median. They both are measures of center in different kind of ways. The mean is the one we use the most, but the median you see all the damn time. There's a certain place in San Diego, a certain thing, where you always hear median. What in San Diego it has? Uh, uh, Say again. No, not the. Sorry, that is my example of why it's called the median is because it's the the median is the thing in the middle of the road. But I mean the actual mathematical median, right? Not the physical median. Um, home prices is definitely somewhere you'd use the median. If you said how much can I expect to pay for a home in San Diego, and you gave them the average. Why would that be way higher than the truth? So let me give you an example. Another place, uh, easier example. Um, an easier little example to talk about is, is salaries, right? Income at a certain company. So let's say at a certain company, um, there's four people. There's this guy just started, there's this guy, there's this guy, and then there's the CEO. This is in thousands of dollars, by the way, right? I'm not doing any political anything. I don't give a shit. Statistics is very, didn't give a shit about anything. It just says, here's the facts. Although now that word has changed. Um, why, if, I give, if somebody says, I'm going to start working there, how much money can I expect to make? And you tell them the average, you have just lied in their face. Right? So instead of regular work. So one way you could do it is just to cut him off. But do you see why the average, well, 450, somebody was asked about this earlier, 450 is an outlier. outlier. I always think about children of the corner here. Outlander. Outlier. You like court, you should watch the show on court. So this is an outlier. Somebody help me out. Uh, figure out what the average is. We'll or say this is a sample. 142.25. Oh, somebody's already got 142.25. So it's 142,250 bucks. That's the average. Do you see how if I said to somebody, oh yeah, I'm gonna get a job there. How much can I expect to make? 142,250 dollars a year. Holy shit. This is awesome. That's a lie, right? It's happened accidentally before like that. It's happened on purpose like that before. This is why I think everybody should take this class so you know to at least have a critical eye about any numbers you see being thrown at you. Where'd it come from? Who'd you talk to? How did you calculate it? Holy shit. And that's going to take it. Facebook. Ah, I'm angry. No, think. Look. Figure out. Did, who did they talk to? Where'd it come from? Right? Especially nowadays. Was it Russians? Was it my grandma that doesn't understand math? Yes. Um, somebody, what's the median of this going to be? 44. Yeah, 44. Another way to do the median is this is six apart. Half of six is three added to this. Get 44. So if I told them 44,000, get out of there, Bart. See how that's more honest. That's a better measure of the middle. So it's better to use median when there are outliers. Otherwise, the mean is the best thing. We will end up using the mean the most because it is the only one that takes into account all the data values. But the median has a few places where it's better. Home prices, you see it always, the median home price has gone up by blah, blah, blah. Median income because there's disparities there.
All right, so there's other measures of center. Where you at? So there's mean, median. Those are obviously good for numerical stuff. There's also one that's good for numerical or non-numerical things. It's called the mode. Number that occurs, or thing, let me say this, thing that occurs the most, mode most. Why right. do you think about pi a la mode? I want the most whipped cream I can get. Or mode most, they go together. So let me, let's do some numerical problems. Um, obviously, what's the mode there? And there is no symbol for mode. If somebody wants to create one, I might run with it. There's no official symbol for mode. You say mode. All right. Isn't that crazy easy? What about this one? What's the mode? Good. It's bimodal. So in this case, we can't have more than one. Bimodal. This book does officially recognize trimodal. Normally, we just go, if there's more than two, screw it. There's no mode. I'm trying to get a feel for where things are clustering. So if I had a quiz and uh, half the people got exactly an 81, I'd say, whoa, did they all miss the exact same thing? It might mean something. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's good to know where do things seem to be clustering. If they're clustering in more than two places, they're not really clustering. Well, this book, I think this book does talk about trimodal. Now, now real, be careful, though. What's the mode here? One. There's a winner. Just because there's two nines. Well, well, there's three ones. I win that pot, right? So this is the mode here is one. I love it. Cool. Not a difficult concept. Thank the gods. But, it, like I said, it works for non-numerical data. If you go out to the parking lot and you see, and there's 100 cars and 80 of them are Fords, then what's the modal type of car? Ford is the one that occurred the most. So this is the one thing that works for uh, qualitative data. Okay. And then there's one last one. There's one last measure of center. mid-range. Now what's going to suck about this equation is somebody remind me, what's the range? We did that before. High minus low. Mm -hmm. Mid-range is the number that's in the middle of those two. How do you find the, the number in the middle of two numbers? You take the average. So the mid-range is going to be high plus low because you're taking an average. But everybody gets so used to high minus low, they do that here too, it makes no sense. I want the number in the middle of the highest and lowest. That's the average of those. So if I had this one, eight, uh, 29, 35, what would the mid range be? 18. Yeah, 35 plus one divided by two. 36 to 80. I like it. Is that decent? Those formulas are remarkably simple. I will let you write them on a sheet. <laughs> you just can't label them. You can't say population means this. No, you just put the formula only. That's why it's called the formula sheet. The only words you could use are like, the only word you use really is mid range. There's no symbol for it. And you can use the word formula sheet. You can put that at the top. Beyond that, don't use words on a formula sheet. Okay. You will lose points in the formula sheet. If you have more than somebody else is allowed to, that's not fair. You've got to even that out. Yes? Is there a no green sign for mode? The, yeah, also, there's no mode symbol. But again, one semester I did have people that came up with a symbol. So, if you guys feel the urge, you're like, come up with a symbol. Screw that. All right, finish Okay, okay, let's do this. Let me, um, 
So let me let you do one side of this handout because I have been talking for a long time and a lot of you guys are like, yeah, yeah. Uh, how did I bring it with me? That would be useful. No, of course not. I decided to leave it at home. So here, um, anybody need to borrow a calculator? You're going to need one. 